within the Democratic Party, the Wall Street Journal poll this weekend, two thirds of two thirds of Democrats think Biden is just too old. You talk about this at the very end of your book. You talk about for most of his presidency, Democratic voters gripe to pollsters about his advanced years. They seemingly prefer a president who projected vigor or possessed oratorical chops. You continue with this, and then you say at the end, um, his public persona reflected physical decline and times dulling of mental uh, faculties that no pill or exercise regime can resist. What was your take spending all this time with President Biden, especially as he grapples with this issue? So, you know, the other context for that paragraph is that my book depicts a president who is deeply in the weeds of policy, who's making enormously consequential decisions and doing it um, much of the time with incredible nuance and care. So it's not like he doesn't have the mental acuity to do the job, which is, I think, what some people would suggest. I think that this age issue is something that's like it's 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 stunningly evident, I'm sure, for the White House now that this is something that they're going to have to reckon with, whether it's a blip now or something that hovers over the campaign for an extended period of time, they have to find a way to lean into age as a virtue. I mean, uh, I think that their argument for getting elected had a lot to do with experience. And I think he can make a case, you know, I'm dealing with these new, you know, these conflicts with nuclear powers. I'm threading the needle with them where I'm applying pressure, but preventing them from escalating in a dangerous sort of way. I have passed all this legislation, which required my personal touch. He needs to find a way to to dig in and somehow project a case to the American people that age equals wisdom and experience. And um, and it's a, it's a hard it's a hard case to make because people have such settled opinions about this based on presentation. That the way that he walks, mm-hmm. the way that he talks, those are those are etched in people's minds. They are indeed, and I, I wonder if with that wisdom, uh, to what extent does it come with a temper, uh, Franklin? There are a lot of come on mans in this book, and I, I do recall a headline in the New York Post uh, last year, I think referred to him as Old Yeller. Uh, we, we've seen him show his teeth more than once here in, in conversations that you witnessed. To what extent is Joe Biden a hothead? Well, he's got what he describes as an Irish temper. Um, so he, he owns that quality of his. And uh, I don't think that that's a product of age. I think that that's been something that's with him through his life. That uh, And mm-hmm. I think that it reflects, to a certain extent, um, an impatience where, uh, you know, he, he demands a lot of his staff. He wants them to have the answers at their fingertips, which seems to me like a reasonable thing for a president to want. I think that when he hears, um, he, he, I I was going to use a a coarse phrase, but he, he's, he likes to say, don't BS a BSer. Um, and I think that that's, that's his attitude. Like he just, he wants people to give it to him straight. If somebody is explaining something to him, that he knows that they're out of their depths and they're struggling, he'd rather not hear them talk. (laughs) And so that's a real quality of his. Hmm. Franklin, so much of your book, you take us behind the scenes of what was going on during the chaotic days of the U.S. withdrawal of Afghanistan, this disastrous withdrawal. And I want to get a sense from you about where you think there was a breakdown within the administration, given the fact that a number of agencies had to help prepare for this withdrawal and then and in the end, this hasty evacuation. Yeah, it was um, it was a very harrowing uh, set of chapters to report. I think it makes for a harrowing read. But one of the things that I wanted to do with those chapters was to try to humanize the decision making process, to humanize the experience of the crisis itself. Um, Biden has very strong had very strong opinions about withdrawing from Afghanistan based on many decades of experience. He'd been to the country many times. He'd fought wars with the military. Um, That's probably the wrong expression. He had bureaucratic battles with the military during the Obama administration where he was arguing against the surge, arguing for withdrawal. Then he could see the ways in which presidents could get jammed, and he was determined to rip off the Band-Aid. The failure Mm -hmm. was that it should have been possible to forecast that there would have been chaos because the Afghan army was 
bucked up by the U.S. military, and there was no forecasting of that. It seemed like everybody was caught by surprise by the hastiness of it. It wasn't hard to see that this would ultimately happen. It was hard, and none of the intelligence agencies forecast it, that it would happen earlier than anticipated. And right. it's, it's a hard thing for the human mind to wrap itself around worst case scenarios happening that quickly, and that was a failure. Franklin, you've been framed by some in the media as a journalist uh, who is seen as friendly to the Biden administration. They open their doors to you. Whether you want to disagree with that, I just wonder, you obviously spend a lot more time around the president than you had initially planned to. I believe your first uh, plan was to cover the first 100 days. With that said, were you eventually asked to leave? Were you asked to, to wrap up your work? I mean that with all due respect, or did you decide that you had enough material to start writing this book? Well, it's a funny thing about uh, book publishing is that the end of the story shapes everything else. And I started off intending to do a book about the first 100 days, then I saw them propose their Build Back Better legislation and the infrastructure bill. And I thought, well, I'll stick around till this is decided. And then at a certain point, my book publisher was the one who told me to wrap it up. She said, you know, <laughs> we've gotten to this one year mark. And I think that this is really a book about the first two years. And uh, it takes a it takes a, a wise publisher sometimes to tell an author it pens down, and that's what happened in my case.